Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I am coming at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, uh, it's a little bit, it's going to be a little bit different. It's not a channel update. It's just me sitting here by the fire, giving you a little holiday cheer, Merry Christmas, and also uh, just telling you a little a little uh, something about this channel. Some, you know, just basically sitting and talking to you with no script. I just wanted to sit down and, and spend a few extra minutes with you guys explaining to you um, or, or informing you or however you want to say it, uh, what's going on with the channel. No, not the channel. Not the channel. Not really the channel. With my store. With my miniature wargaming store and my gaming uh per se just me personally just really just what's going on in my life okay first of all thank you for everything you guys have done for me over the last six months or so uh i had left the retail side of the universe and i've come over to the uh figure painting right so i do more now uh, in my store over the last month or so, I've expanded. I'm actually selling unpainted models as well. So if you're interested in, I have a very limited selection. I mean, it is super small because what I do is, uh, when I get, when I get models in, I set them off to the side and I paint them and then I put them on eBay. But if you're interested in just checking out, see what I've got, it's I've got my eBay store now. I've up I've done so good of business that I've upgraded the store from like a starter to a standard or however it works. I don't remember what it's actually called. It's not the super advanced mega one. It's just like the second tier. Um which basically what 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 it basically does for me is it allows me to post uh, a certain number of auctions and a certain number of fixed uh, per month, right? Included in that, included in that monthly fee for the, having a store. Plus, I've got a store page that you can go to and just browse all of my stuff. Uh, I think, I, and because of that, um, I've started to expand. Like I said, I was going to, I'm, I'm buying models now that, it, okay, two or three months ago because of the way the finances was working and, and my work schedule and how I, how, how much time I have to paint and stuff like that. I would only buy what I knew I could paint in that month. So I would say, okay, I can paint this many models in a month so that's what i'll buy i'll buy this many models boom and then they're all sold okay so paid all my bills and then i've got profit right well that profit i turn around and i well let me rephrase that i have cost of goods sold so i have like a cost of the models that i painted i take that money and i reinvest in those same models, because I know they'll probably sell again. But then I have another profit of, you know, people paying for the quality of work that I've done. So that profit I've taken and invested it back into the store. And by doing that, I've noticed that I'm buying more models than I can paint. And so... I started to get boxes and I've got three giant boxes up there right now, but I've started to get boxes and boxes of models. I got a shelf of models right there. I just can't paint them. I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm painting a unit a day pretty much, but if I have 31 units, then I've got too many models, right? Okay. Well, all those extra boxes and bags and blisters and everything else that I have, I'm selling. Okay, I, so I've posted, like I've got, just, just 
casually, just glancing at some Warlord Games models. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, I got 12 Warlord Games units just sitting on that shelf right there, still in the box. When I need a model to paint, okay, those are all for sale. I've got those all on my YouTube YouTube, my eBay channel right now. But if I wanted to like pull one of those units off the shelf and paint it, I would just go into my eBay store, close out that auction or that uh, fixed price sale. I would just take it off of the store and then I would take it over to my workbench. I'd paint them and, and then I'd sell them as painted. So, so what I've decided, and this is going to be a kind of a change to the store is, I've ordered, I still got like four boxes of stuff I'm still waiting to get in from various manufacturers. My strong, 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 very strong miniature um, collections are going to be from Warlord Games, Perry Miniatures, and Victrix. Okay, so if you need any Perry, if you need any Victrix or Warlord, let me know. I can try to get it in. Okay, if you need something painted, I really enjoy painting those models. Uh, there are other models that I enjoy painting as well, but I but those companies really do me well. And uh, people out there must love them too because they're buying them off me uh okay so hypothetically let's say i'm so um, i don't know i'm jumping all over the place i told you we're just sitting here talking i've got like something like 50 boxes coming individual units like individual boxes not not uh shipping boxes you know i've got like 20 per box and i've got like four boxes coming but those those individual boxes, when I get them in, I'm going to immediately list them on my store. All of them. 100%. Just all of it. Just list it. And then I'm going to say to myself, hmm, I want to paint this one Napoleonic unit. I'm going to pull it off this shelf, take it off my eBay store, paint it, and then repost it as painted. So, uh... But I might not get to that. Like I've noticed, I've got some like Republican Romans that I bought for my personal collection, right? I personally, the chairs in the way, you can't see them. But there's some Republican Romans right there. Okay, so I've been slowly in between painting for the store, I've been painting for myself. And so I took some Republican Romans and I started painting them and I'm like, okay, this is the army I'm going to make for Hail Caesar is this Republican Roman army. So I bought a bunch of Republican Roman miniatures from Victrix because they're beautiful models. I've had these three bags probably for two months. I'm working on finishing up the first bag. I said, man, it's going to take me a while before I get through all these other bags. So I said, and, the, and then I've got these Gaelic guys that I've been holding on to because I was going to build an army to go up, you know. And then I said, you know, I got these Macedonians and I've got these uh, Greeks. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to be able to get to all these for my personal collection this month. It's not going to happen, right? So because I'm painting for the store. But in between like maybe once a week or something like that, I'll paint a unit for my personal collection. So I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to list all that stuff from my personal collection into the store. And then I will, if I need it for my personal collection, I could just go up there, pull it off the shelf, clear it off the store, paint it up, put it in my army. The, 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 the same day that I put those Republican Romans on, on eBay, they sell. I'm like, oh, okay, they sold. Damn. Okay, no, not a bad thing. That's a good thing. 
because I can always turn around and rebuy it for myself. But it kind of did a click in my head. Something just clicked. It's like there are people out there that want to buy these models unpainted because they want to put them together and paint them themselves. So why am I holding on to this huge collection of models, these Gaelic Macedonians? I've got some Persians over there, and I got all kinds of models that I bought a long time ago for my personal collection. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to sell them, and then I'll rebuy them. You know, when I when I get ready to paint them for myself. Or I'll, if I need to restock the store, you know. So what's cool about it is I posted a bunch of those models and a bunch of them is sold. And uh, it's good because those were all just collecting dust on my shelf while I was painting my other Republican Romans. And then I paint my, I'm, I'm really heavily working on some Napoleonics. So I kind of put my Republican Romans on pause. So, so my point is, I had, an, I had an epiphany. Why don't I order a bunch of models? That's what I said. I got like 80 bags coming. A bunch of models from Perry, from Victrix, from Warlord Games. Get them in. And put them on my store. Never know. Somebody might want them. Somebody might buy it. Right? And so, and if they don't buy it, no big deal. I was going to buy them anyway. Or, or I'll paint them and I'll put them up for as painted because there's a ton of people out there wanting painted models. So, so what I'm doing now is the store is kind of transitioning into a, you could buy models at my store that are unpainted, still in the box, brand new. But I'm also going to have a section where they're all painted. So uh, you're going to be able to find models. Now, am I going to carry every model? No, I don't have the resources. I don't have the finances to do that. I can't, I can't um, pick a manufacturer. Let's say Warlord. I can't go to Warlord Games and get one of everything and put it on my shelf. Can't happen. It's going to be thousands of dollars. Couldn't do it. But what I've noticed over the last five months that I've been doing this, every month I can increase that inventory just a little bit. So I go, so every month my inventory has been growing. Uh, also because I just can't paint that fast. I can only do about, okay, to be honest with myself, I can only do about 15 units a month. Uh, yeah, I can do 15, I can do a, a unit every other day, probably. Two days, I can do a unit. Sometimes I will have two units going at, like right there you can see i got three units sometimes i will do three units at one time and then i'll list three different things okay but that might take me three days to do so really it only took me a day per unit sometimes with my napoleonics figures because of the detail that's on them it might take me two, maybe three days. The third day would be kind of like flocking and basing and then actually listing on eBay. So it really only takes me about two days to paint the models. Uh, we'll count it as three. So, but throughout the, throughout the month, counting these, counting the Napoleonics, counting the Ancients, a reasonable amount would be about 15 units per month. I bought like 20 units last month, 20, 22 units last month. 
painted 15 of them. So there's seven units. Extra. And now this month, if I buy 22 more units, and then I paint 15 of them, that'll be another seven. So then now that's 14 extra units in my inventory, right? And that's been going on for the last three months. This month, this month, my terms have changed. It's some of my wholesalers, some of my, some of the people where I'm getting these models from. My terms have changed where I can get, I can order, or I have ordered a ton of models. I got like 80 models coming, 80 different units, give or take. I mean, I, I don't even remember. But I'm, remember, I'm only going to paint 15 of those. I count like a tank. Actually, I can do a tank in one day. I, I painted that T3485. I started in the morning. And I was finished by the evening. Listed. I started in the morning. Finished it. Posted it on eBay before I went to bed. So, but that's part of that 15. Because some units take three days. Some units take one day. So I'm just averaging it out at about two days. There's no way I can paint the inventory that I ordered. <laughs> but you know what? It'll be for sale. And if somebody wants to buy it, great. And if they, and if I'm able to sell enough of my painted models, which is, which is what I really been, have been doing, if I can sell like 15 of those a month, which I'm selling that, I'm selling more than that, actually. Um, actually, yes, I'm selling more than that because I'm pulling models off the shelf that I've had for years and including those on my in my inventory saying I'm never going to use those again so let me go ahead and sell them and I'm selling them so but I'm making enough money uh and I this is this is part of this video is I want to thank everybody for helping me build this store out and build my inventory because I'm making enough to restock those models that I painted and sold plus a few extra models so every month my inventory is growing this last month, December, I ordered way more than I could possibly paint in a month. Uh, now, the downside is, there is a downside. I'm eating my own profits. Because what I'm, what I'm doing is, out of those 15 units that I'm painting, about three or four of them are for my personal collection. So really, I'm only painting about 10 or 11 or 12 units for sale. Those extra three or four are going in my own collection. Well, what does that mean? Well, I'm eating, I mean, my profits. I could have sold those or I could have painted units that would sell or I could have left them in the box for sale as unpainted or, you know, whatever. But I'm doing okay. I'm doing good enough that I can maintain the store. I can increase the inventory, which is what I'm doing. And I can paint my own armies. Thank you. You guys are helping out a lot. Um, I, I say you guys, but this is the YouTube channel. And I do not know really if anybody on the YouTube channel shops at the eBay store. Don't know that. I assume you do, but that doesn't mean you do. Um, I try to cross-reference them. Like on my YouTube channel, I will give a link to my eBay store and eBay doesn't like you to link off of the off of eBay so anybody shopping at my eBay store might not know that I have 
a YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully they do, but maybe they don't. But, um, okay. These guys are some Romans. I painted them for myself for SPQR, right? Uh, and I decided that uh, I'm not going to use these. I'm going to use my Republicans. These are these are uh, these are Caesarians, uh, which is still Republican. They look a lot like the Republican guys, but the Republican ones are a little bit older. They have feathers out of their ha ha heads. These guys have horsehair plumes. That's the big difference, really. Uh, the shields are just slightly different. Uh, and these guys are mounted on one-inch circles. I'm going to... All my SPQR is going to be mounted on 20 millimeter squares. That way I can use four of them for Hail Caesar on a magnet. I've been magnetizing stuff. Um, you can see my new paint rack here. It's working out well for me. I got a new... Uh, Brush cleaning station here. That's working out really well for me. Uh, yeah, this 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 whole setup here, I got other paint rack over here that my old paint rack that you might see on some of my older videos. And then of course I got my computer set up right here. So while I'm painting, I'm listening to like podcasts and Deep Space Nine or Mandalorian or whatever, you know, I'm watching my Netflix up here while I'm painting. Um, just finished the Umbrella Academy. I thought that was really good. Um, I'm going to give that uh, two thumbs up. The first episode of the Umbrella Academy, I was like, what the hell am I watching? This is, what? This is, I didn't like it. So, like three weeks later, Senator Ted Cruz said, you know what? I watched the Umbrella Academy. It's really good. And I'm like, he did? He liked it? Let me go back and revisit that. And then I watched the second episode, and I was hooked. It I watched the entire two seasons back to back. You know, like I binge watched them. Actually, it took me about a week to watch the two seasons while I was painting. But uh, it was really good. It, it's not. It's a. It's a superhero show, but it's it's kind of like the New Mutants. You know. It's kind of like uh, the New Mutants met Monty Python. I don't know. It's it's kind of... Um, it's good. I liked it. Um, I can't wait for the new season. Hopefully there is a new season. You know how Netflix is with their shows. They're really good and then they cancel them. You know, so I don't know what's up with Netflix. But, uh, okay. So, let me, let me just see. Because we're just sitting here. We're just talking. Um, let me think. Okay, Napoleonics, right? I ordered a ton of Napoleonics, mainly for myself. And I said, you know what? I'm trying to do Waterloo. I want to do all of Waterloo. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> but I'm focusing on Second Corps. Right, so I'm going to do the set because one of the reasons why it was at Quattro Bra, right? So if I do second core, I'll ha I'll ha I'll be able to do Quattro Bra, and I'll be able to do Hugomont, which second core attacked Hugomont. So these are two big things, and then if I decide, you know what, I'm going to do Duralron's core, which I think is the first core, I can just say. These, the second core is first core. You know, I can just, because I, I was thinking I'm going to split Waterloo in half. Like, only do the left, like the, the the Brussels Road that goes right up the middle of Waterloo. Do everything on this side in one battle. And then do everything on this side in the second battle. Which, that's that's doable. Believe it or not, that's doable. And then, and then maybe a third battle over here where the Prussians are. Right? So... I think I could do it, and I wouldn't, and I could, so, for the French, I only need to have, like, one core, which is the a normal game amount of figures, uh, 
I could add maybe a cavalry corps. I could add maybe a couple of divisions of guard or something like that. And so I would have enough. That's pretty much, I've already painted all those figures for Quattro Bra a couple of years back, but then I sold them all. So I know it can be done and I know it can be played in an afternoon because we played Quattro Bra in an afternoon with like five divisions per side or something like that. It was a lot. And a, a division is two brigades or more. And those brigades had like, okay, th those brigades could have four battalions, right? So you're looking at like eight battalions per division on the average. And then uh, like four divisions. So what is that? 24 battalions? Wait, is my math wrong? Wait, 32 battalions? Eight times four? Yeah, 32, 32 battalions? That's a lot of motherfucking models. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm working towards. I'm working towards making a full core with support elements, right? And then on the Allied side, that's the tricky one because French, eh, French is French. You know, they're all the same. But when it comes to the Allies, which is, this is part of the thing that's really exciting to me. I got Brunswickers, Nassau, Dutch. Belgian, Hanover, King's German Legion, British. That might be it. And the British, I've got like all different kinds of hussars and light dragoons and Union Cav and lifeguards. And then I've got the, the Highlanders and the... Uh, I got the guards, of course, and then like line units and then the 95th the Rifles uh, the, and then the Hanovers. It's like every single, what you see on the Warlord box, the guys in red with the red caps, that's maybe one of the Hanover units. All the other ones are different. Every Hanover unit is different and depending on if they're line or if they're Landveer or what province they came from. They have different colored uniforms. Some of them have mixed uniforms, like half the units in red and half the units in green or whatever. It's madness. But you know what's cool about it? I gotta paint it all. Because <laughs> and that's what I like about it. You know, the, the, when, you're painting, when you're painting World War II and you've got a German army they're all the same. Whether they're Eighth Army or they're, you know, you don't you don't mix up your Eighth Army with your Blitzkrieg Germans, with your Hair Germans, with your Grenadiers and your SS. You don't mix that. Well, some people you shouldn't mix it. I'm not saying people don't, but you shouldn't mix it. So what do you got? You got like eighty models. And they're all exactly the same. I mean, literally, they're all exactly the same. You might have a couple of different tanks and you give each tank a different camouflage pattern. But the troops are all the same. Unless you have some like SS and P dot and then some SS and splinter stripes and then, you know, whatever. But uh, you got the Americans. They all look exactly the same. British, they all look exactly the same. So in in World War II, you don't get a lot of variety in your paint schemes. Napoleonics, everything's different. You got a different flag for every freaking battalion. You know, you got. <laughs> it's that's that's the fun. The fun is I'm I'm researching what units were there for one thing, where they were deployed in the battle, so I don't like put a Prussian unit over here attacking Hugomont or something like that. Uh, so you get, you, you know where all the units are located, you know what their force strength is. So you kind of know how big of a unit you need to make. 
Okay, so let's just let's just talk about a game, right? Uh, like a game I'm building. And just just the numbers I gave you earlier. 32 battalions, right? Because we're going to go, let's see if I can do some math here. Let's start at the, let's start at the top. One core. I think Sony might be home. So you got one core. Four divisions. Each division has two brigades. Okay, that's eight. Approximately. Because I know the British, some of them have three or four brigades. No, they, um, maybe not. No, maybe not. Maybe, maybe whatever. But, uh, so you're looking at two brigades per division. In each brigade, you're looking at, on the average, three or four, right? So, four times eight, 32, right? Okay, so 32 battalions. Each battalion, on the average, has 24 figures. So what's that? 32 times 24? Oh my gosh. 150, so 100 million jillions. I'm going to bring up a clackalator. Okay, 32 battalions times 24 figures. That can't be right. 32 battalions. That's 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 a lot of battalions on one side times 24 figures 768 models you heard you see me that's we'll shave because there's and some of that's cavalry right so you're looking at horse and man too but we'll shave. We'll just say 700 because there are some units that are a little bit smaller than others. There are some larger units, but we'll do, and, and some units, some brigades will only have like three battalions, and some brigades will have six battalions. So it, it could it could go either way, but we'll just we'll just call it 700 models, plus the generals, all the brigade generals and the division generals and the corps general. We'll just call it 700. Per side, that's 1,400 models. And that's only one core per side. 1,400 models. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about bolt action. You, you get about Three infantry squads, that's probably about 30 models. And then you're looking at maybe five, six support weapons. We'll just call it 15 extra models. So you're looking at 45 models. Plus an officer and stuff like that. So we'll just say 50 models. So if you're a bolt action player and you have to get 50 models to build your army and if you want to Build an army for two players, and you have to buy, you have to buy and build and paint a hundred models. I don't want to hear you crying. I don't want to hear any moaning. I don't want to hear any player out there saying, "Oh my gosh, I can't paint a hundred models. I have to paint fourteen freaking hundred. <laughs> it's going to take me a year, but still, I I have both. I'm. Bleh. I have, I can paint a bolt action army in a week. That's 30 dudes, all the support elements, add a few tanks in there. That's it. A week. So I don't want to hear moaning. <laughs> now, Hail Caesar, it's, it's about, it's, it's organized exactly the same as black powder because you have divisions and you have brigades and you have, uh, well, they just have divisions. You have divisions, 
basically they call their brigades divisions. They just call them divisions. And you only play with about a quarter of that. So you're looking at 200 models. Uh, no, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, there's in my in my Hail Caesar scenario book, the Germanic tribes fight back with three groups of five war bands in each group. So that's 15 war bands times 32 models. Okay, I got my calculator open right here. So 32 times 15, 480 models. But I'm not playing the Caesarians and I'm not playing the Germanics. The Germanics, that's because they have these huge units. That's crazy. Okay, so, but my Caesarians, they have, actually, I think it's less than that now that I think about it. But yeah, the, the, the Romans have five units per, the same number of units, so there'd be 15 units, but they're only about 16 models per unit, something like that, so it's 240, so they're about half. So, um, man, there's a few more than that because there's some skirmishers and some cav and there's some bolt throwers. So we'll say 300. So 300 per side, or 300 for the Romans, another 400 for the Germans. So you're looking at 700. That's half as many, or that's the same amount as one army in Napoleonics. Or half as many as the entire table. But a lot of players don't want to build both sides. I know this video is going on, but, you know, that's okay. We're just chilling. We're just talking. If you want to pause this video or if you don't want to listen to me rant, then that's fine too. But I just, I got the day off. I'm, I've finished painting those. Don't want to paint any more today. Taking a, taking a little bit of a break. I'm going to talk to you guys. A lot of players don't want to paint two armies. I don't get it. I mean, well, I'm, I'm weird. I'm weird. I like painting, obviously. I have a painting business. But when I wasn't painting, I, well, I guess I still liked painting. I, that never went away. Okay, so what I'm saying is, I, didn't, I don't mind, when I'm playing like a miniatures game, I don't mind painting a bunch of different... That's why I like the allies. I'm jumping around. That's why I don't like... That's why I don't mind the allies in Napoleonics because there's a million different uniforms. I get that... I get that um, desire satiated by painting different armies in World War II. So, like, I can paint some Germans... I can paint some British, I can paint some Americans, I can paint some paratroopers, I can paint some Russians or Japanese or Marines or whatever. And every one of those is like a different unit in Napoleonics. So you have different color schemes, different patterns. I have to do the research, I have to look it up. That's half the fun, is finding out what's all, what this unit's all about. Like... How many machine guns did they carry? Why did they carry rifles instead of carbines? Why are they, uh, why do they wear baseball caps instead of berets or whatever, you know? And then I'll, so in World War II, I'll, I'll collect a bunch of different armies. And then I'll say, hey, bud, you want to come over and play a game? I'll have the table set up and I'll have the miniatures ready to go. Right, because I have it all. Right, I I got the Germans, I got the Americans. What side do you want to play? Let's go at it, you know. Or uh, we'll have a scenario that we're playing or something. Because um, sometimes, and this is this is this is something that I've run into locally. I don't know how I can say this diplomatically without without insulting any of my friends. Because 
I like every single one of them and they all have strengths. One of them is not painting models. Um, I have a bunch of friends that love playing miniatures games and you might too. Or you might even have a friend that doesn't know he likes playing miniature games until you introduce them to that. But how can you introduce them to a game if you only have one army? So, like, I'll ask one of my friends over. I'll say, hey, you want to come over and play? I haven't finished painting my army. Yeah, that's because he'll never finish painting. He has, he has like a wall, of, a wall of shame or whatever you call it. You know, when you have all these miniatures you can't paint. I used to have that until I sold it all. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, I still have a wall of shame. But um, all my friends. Well, I, I let me rephrase that. I, I do have, okay, let me back up. I do have one friend in town that paints religiously. And he's got a ton of armies. And it's all Napoleonics. But it's at an odd scale that I don't have. There, I say odd. It's 172nd. He's got a bunch of armies in 172nd. So whenever we want to play, he will have to provide both armies. He doesn't mind. I, I, when I, when you play at my place, I don't mind. I like having both armies on the table. I get excitement out of saying, check it out, my French guard over there. Take a look at them. And look at those Nassau guys. They look, they look cool as hell. I, I take pride in my paint jobs. He does too. He does a really good job. We don't really get a chance to play very often because he's like on the other side of the moon. And uh, yeah, he's so far away. And he works all the time so it's very rare that we get a chance to play and because he plays he yeah it's very rare we get a chance to play plus he loves naval games and he'll paint his navy armies that's he's like the only one i've got a bunch of other friends in town love to play miniature games have zero figures I don't mind. This that's the part. If they never paint a figure, it's okay. It's it's really okay because I have the models. You might encounter this yourself. You might be in a town where you've got you got some best friends that you've grown up with going to high school or whatever and you're big into World War II. And you got turned on at some convention or some friend turned you on to miniature gaming. And you are collecting, a, let's say, a Italian army. Because you're big into the Italian armies. Uh, especially in the desert. With the Semivantes and stuff. But you can't find anybody to play with. Because nobody else has an army. For the game you play. Well you're going to have to do something about that. You. Take it upon yourself. To get a second army. Get it. Paint it. And. And if it's only painting a hundred figures. Damn dude. If you can't paint a hundred figures. Get out of the hobby. <laughs> Go do something else. Play a computer game. You know. Or, 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 I don't know, get a second army. That's what I'm saying. It'll do two things. You'll, you'll enjoy yourself painting that army. It's a big stress reliever for me. When I'm, when I'm painting, I'm venting. Or I'm venting through the paintbrush. But once you get your second army painted, and they look different, you know, you're like, whoa, I got two different armies. This is nice. And you find that friend that's kind of interested in that period, and he would be, he's kind of mildly interested in gaming, and you invite him over to your place, and you, you know, because you guys have common interests, you turn him on to the miniature wargaming. 
and then he might enjoy it because you've just provided him with figures. He's playing. He's digging it. Now you have an opponent. Now you don't have to go, does anybody else have an army? Does anybody else have an army? No? Okay, I'm going to go back home. No. you got two armies. You don't need a second army. Hey, you on the street, come over and play with me. Right? And so you got your got your opponent. And then icing on the cake would be, I want to make my own army. So you talk to them about how to organize, where to shop, or game in miniatures, where to get figures. If he doesn't know how to paint, I'll paint it for him, or whatever. So you, you, you show him how to paint. Maybe he doesn't know how to paint. I didn't know how to paint when I started. I'm going to be honest. Who knows how to paint when they start? Nobody. Not one person just is born knowing how to paint. It No. It doesn't happen. I have to, I took some art classes. Not many. A couple. They didn't really teach me anything. <laughs> I mean, a little. Just the basics, right? Experience. Getting some paint. Man, I had some old paint. I had some armory paints. You remember those paint that came in this large glass jar? Do you remember those paints? Armory. Whoa, that was a long time ago. And then there was testers with the oil-based paints. Whew, luckily, we don't have to do that anymore. It's all water-based nowadays. If you don't waste your time buying any oil-based paints ever, don't do it. There's no advantage for getting any kind of oil-based paints. Some people say, well, oil-based paints blend better than oil. No, no. Acrylics, that's the way to go. It's just, it's better on your brushes. You don't need to have thinner. You can thin your paint with water. Yeah, acrylics. Okay, so so I painted with some armory paints back in the day. What, what was I painting? D&D &D models, right? I had, I had like a character. He had like flesh, which was all over his chain mail. And then I had some chain mail thrown on there. It kind of looked like silver. You know? I gave him like a red cape. Some black boots. And he was done. Right? That was my first miniature. And then gradually over the years hundreds of models later I think I'm really good at it. I can paint 30 models, World War II, 30 World War II models in about two days. I can paint 24 Napoleonic figures in about three days. Uh, if you give me a fantasy figure, a tank in one day, if you can give me a fantasy figure, it can be painted, in, it, depending on if I'm only painting one figure, it'll be done in one day. But if you give me 10 fantasy figures, they'll all be painted in one day because of the, my you you, you got to let paint dry so flesh on this guy i'm not going to sit here and wait for that flesh to dry before i start painting my second model so flesh 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 oh this first guy's dry chainmail chainmail Chainmail. Chainmail. Oh, that first one's dry. Black boots. Black boots. Black you get you get the idea. So you could do ten I can do ten models in the same amount of time it would take me to paint one model. How did I learn how to do that? When I was painting Warhammer 40k models. Power armor. And what's kind of cool about the Warhammer models, Warhammer 40k models are you can come up with whatever paint scheme you want. You can paint them pink with purple eyes. Whatever you want to do. There, there is only a couple of dozen official paint schemes. And 
and they're supposed to be a thousand different units, but they only give you like a couple of dozen. The other 980, you can make up on your, every, everybody can make up their own. Uh, and so I did. I, well, I, I went with some official stuff. I went with like the Green Knights or the Ultramarines or whatever I did. Um, but, and, and because I'm a stickler to uniform, so I would always go in and like, what are the Ultramarines supposed to look like? But you don't have to do that. You can just paint them however you want. And just gra because of the, the way the armor is molted and the, the way the straps and the gun barrels and all that stuff, you start to learn you know, how to hit the highlights through reading magazines, White Dwarf. I learned how to dry brush and how to use washes and how to use highlights and blending. And then I recently, within the last 10 years or so, I've been watching YouTube videos of other painters that know more than me. And I'm learning from them on how to do certain paint techniques. And one guy will paint this way, another guy will paint this way, and I'll look at both of those and say, I like that, and I like that, but I'm going to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and I'm going to paint this way, you know? And so, um, yeah, and I, I've been painting for 50 years. No, 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 that's not right. 40 years. 40, just over 40 years I've been painting. And I think it's taken me about 35 years of trial and error, experience, studying, watching, learning to get good. So if you are a, if you're a painter and you feel like, um, or let me rephrase that. If you want to start your own army and you don't think you're going to be able to paint, if you've never painted, guess what? You're not going to be able to paint. Don't worry about it. Do it anyway. Paint the best of your ability. You might surprise yourself. You might be really good. You might be a natural. Um, watch a lot of videos. Watch other people paint. You know, learn some techniques. Absorb and then paint. Um, if, if it's no good, don't worry about it. Just keep going, make paint, you know, a lot of new painters tell you to keep your first model, whatever that first model is that you painted, keep it, save it. I wish I had saved that Paladin model or whatever it was 40 years ago. It was a, I think it was a Grenadier model. Yeah, Grenadier that came in a box of like D&D Adventurers or something like that. If you keep that model and underneath, like on the base of it, underneath the base, put the date of when you painted it. Paint it on there. Etch it in there. Whatever you want to do. Just make sure it's permanent. It doesn't come off. Ten years down the line, take one of the models you just recently painted and compare it to that first model, and you will see your improvement. You'll say, wow, man, look how good I am. Ten more years later, compare, and you'll be like, oh, my God, I'm getting really good. You know, and uh, you'd be surprised. You, I got some models up there that are pretty old, and I look at them every now and then, and I say, man, I need to repaint that sucker because that, but I, but I don't because I'm using it as an, as a, as a reference of old models that I sucked when I painted because everybody sucks when you start it just just accept it okay um yeah so let me talk about my Napoleonic game I'm sorry I, I jumped around I'm working on the second core of of the French as well as the allies for Quatre Bras uh, one of the reasons why I'm working on the Allies for Quattro Bra is because I think a lot of the same units are across the field from the Second Corps at Waterloo. So there are some units at Hugomont, 
that were not at Quatre Bras. And so I'm making those as well. So I'm doing the a lot of the units at Quatre Bras, a lot of the units at Hugomont, and then I'm doing the French Second Corps and probably Kellerman's Corps. And yeah. And so uh, that's what I'm working on. I'm working on Second Corps, Hugomont, and then I'm going to use those models to be proxies for the cores that are to the right. I'm going to use the same models as proxies to fight against the Prussians once I finally decide to do the Prussians, which will probably be next year. You know, not to, not 2021, but 2022, I'll probably do Prussians. Uh, I have some Austrians, but I thought about, I said, you know what? Austrians are going to be easy to paint, and then I can put them on the channel, I put them on the store and sell them because I should be able to paint them quick. I don't know. I think Austrians are, they, they you know, with their white uniforms and everything, they look really cool, but uh, they have no purpose at Waterloo. They're not there. They, they don't exist. So uh, now I've been thinking about doing Peninsula War, but if some scenarios like a battle, like maybe Karuna Bay or something in the Peninsula, but if I do that, I'm still going to have to use my Waterloo British and my Waterloo French, which there's no problem. Nobody in the world will care that they have Belgique Shakos and not stovepipes, you know. So don't, I don't think anybody would care. They'll just say British, French, good. Um, so that means I might need to do some Portuguese or Spanish. I don't think they're at Corona Bay, actually. I don't remember. Yeah. So, and I think that's only a core. I think that's only a few divisions on a defensive where the French are attacking with a core. So that should be that sh that should be pretty right on line with what I'm building. I build a Waterloo Quatre Bras tile style army. I should be able to field pretty much anything. They might have to proxy as other units, but that's okay. I don't think anybody in the world would care. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I okay. French artillery. Uh, looking at the left side of the battle, there's only like five or six cannons that I need. Well, I ordered like five or six. I ordered like 15 cannons by accident. Yeah, it's it was an accident. I ordered like 15 of them. So, so, uh, I'm going to have a few of those on the eBay store. Yeah, I might even assemble them and put them up there painted. Because uh, I, I ordered too many of them. Um, yeah, the uh, flags. I ordered, I think, almost almost every single flag needed for Waterloo. I've got a couple of hundred flags. 300 flags, something like that. Crazy. Uh, Perry. Perry medals. Um, I ordered a bunch of those for my for my Napoleonics. But I'm, I also ordered their World War II line. Uh, they have some really good World War II models. And I... Or mm. Yeah, so Perry does some World War II models. And I ordered a few ones that I haven't ordered before just to see... Just to experiment, see what they what they look like, paint them up, put them on the store. Um, Perry, I don't think I'm gonna stock like in the store. I'm only gonna order what I. No, let me phrase that. Perry metals. I'm only gonna order what I'm going to paint. The Perry plastics, I will order and put on the shelf, and then sell, and then pull them off the shelf when I need to use them for my personal, or if I need to just paint them. Um, Victrix is having a hard time getting models in uh, to restock their own shelves so it's a little hard for me to get Victrix models um, they upped my minimum order uh, just so you know I can't just order one bag from Victrix well I can but then I would have to pay uh I'd have to pay too much for it. 
for shipping and everything else. So for me as my eBay store to order Victrix, I have to order a minimum amount, which is a lot. And that's why I said I got like these 80 boxes coming in. Um, so what I might do about that is only order from Victrix maybe every other month because of the, the size of the order. Unless by getting that in, I'm actually able to sell it. If I sell it, if I sell more than my minimum order, then I might be able to get a, an order in every month from them. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. But, uh, and Warlord, they're probably the best company when it comes to customer service for me as a, as a store. They, I have my own personal rep. rep. He communicates with me weekly by email but he'll, he'll he'll communicate more if I ask him to um, they worked with me to do anything I've asked him to do anything I've asked him to do they've done um, they've they've even given me incentives to order from them and not other people they have not done okay I used to do, like I told you, maybe I told you, I used to have a, my own retail store back in the day called The War Room. And we would order from this company. A lot of people call this other company the Evil Empire. Uh, the reason, One of the reasons why they called them the Evil Empire, and I would also call them the Evil Empire, because they tried to control me and my store. They told me what I could and couldn't put in my store. And they told me about the minimums of each item that I had to have, the racks I had to have, where the racks had to be displayed in my store. It was... It was overwhelmingly controlling. I mean, it was to the point where I didn't want to do... I didn't want to do business with them. So I never ordered directly from them. I would always go through a third-party distributor because that third-party distributor didn't care where I how much I ordered or where I displayed it, if I used the proper displays or what my minimums were, or anything like that. They didn't. They just were happy to have my business. But when it comes to Warlord Games, which is the, a company that I'm doing a lot of business with right now, you know, because I love their games, which I think is way better than the Evil Empire's games. The Evil Empire's games were checkers. And Warlord Games' game is chess. So, it's checkers versus chess. Plus, the Evil Empire didn't have... Uh, they didn't have any historicals. It was all sci-fi fantasy, right? So I, I jump into um, historicals because I love ancients, Hail Caesar. I love Napoleonics, black powder. And I love uh, World War II. Those are my, like, that's my jam. And there's bolt action. Their models are like half the price maybe even less than half the price of the old evil empire. The new evil empire is ridiculous. It's like, it's like $25 for one model. It's crazy. You know, when you, when you, in that, no, they should be, it should be like 50 cents. Not, okay, maybe a dollar if, if you're talking about an extra large model. And that's, Warlord Games is like that. They, they have, you know, you can buy a box of, Napoleonic infantry, 24 models for like $24. So it's like a buck a model. That's awesome. That's that's the way it should be. And then they give you flags and everything else. Um, the uh, They are, they work with me. They, they are constantly trying to, oh yeah, my, my point. <laughs> they give you incentives 
to buy from them. They don't penalize for not buying from them. So <clears throat> the evil empire used negative reinforcement saying, if you don't put our rack in the front, then you can't buy our starter set where Warlord uses positive reinforcement. They say, if you buy our starter set, we'll give you an extra box set. You know, or if you display it in the front, we'll give you an extra one. So it's kind of like, sure, I'll, I want the extra one. So, of course, I'll put it in the front. Yeah, so, so you notice there's a, there's a subtle difference between punishing for not doing something or rewarding for doing something. So Warlord keeps my motivation up and... And plus, the game is good, you know? So, okay. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I think I went way over what I wanted to do. I only wanted to do like a 30-minute video. It wound up being an hour. So, uh, thanks for coming out and checking out this video, hanging out with me this afternoon. Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year. And uh, I hope that 2021 is a better year for you and me compared to this madhouse of 2020. And uh, I'll see you next time.